conversation we're about to have, the Lakers offseason. Remember, they missed out on the coach to the left of your screen in Dan Hurley, and they hired the coach with no coaching experience on the right of your screen. J.J. Redick has never coached an NBA game at any level in his life. Well, not only did you miss out on the coaching at first, well, then you go on and you draft LeBron's son, the 55th overall pick. Obviously, he should be easy to identify. Ronnie James Jr., a high school phenom at USC. Obviously, he had a heart condition, averaged four points and three assists. He gets drafted by the Lakers. Okay, that was questionable. But then as you move on and you progress throughout the rest of the offseason, Clay Thompson, a five-time All-Star, four-time NBA champion. The Lakers could have used him and they wanted him. Clay Thompson chooses to go to the Dallas Mavericks instead. So as you stare at Crypto Arena, you see the tumbleweeds because no players are walking in. It's just bare bones in crypto. Nothing of promise in sight. So many people have questions about the Lakers offseason, but the most important question I will ask to the brilliant minds to the left and right of me is this. Joy Taylor has LeBron James and the Lakers offseason been a bust. No, I don't think so. I think it's gone like I thought it would. Hmm. I mean, what's been the timeline? They fired Darvin Ham. Okay, so they hired a coach that LeBron and AD are happy with. That check expected that. LeBron resigned. They drafted Bronny. They weren't really in the bidding for any of these other big free agents, and they didn't get them. Mm. I, the, I don't know that it's a bust because th it's completely checked the expectations that I had for LA. I think getting Klay Thompson would have been an incredible boost. But Clay Thompson has a say in this, obviously, mm -hmm. and that wasn't his preference. So it's not like the conversations weren't had, and he chose to go to the Mavs. That's a better situation for him, he feels. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice to see him play alongside LeBron James. We know how LeBron is with shooters. But uh, w overall, when you look at the position that the Lakers are in financially, when you look at what they can do with trades, when you look at what the conversation was heading into the offseason and after they fired Darvin Ham, I think the Lakers have done everything that I expected them to do. So I, if, you, if you look at what the expectations were and thought that that was going to be a negative offseason, then I guess you could consider that to be a bust. But I don't think the Lakers are, are in a bad situation. I think they could be in a better situation. But outside of running into the Nuggets, which they is, have some unfortunate luck doing, I think they would have had a more successful postseason, and I don't expect them to compete for a championship at this point hmm. because of what they have on their roster. I think they're a competitive team. I think LeBron is still playing at a high level. AD is still playing at a high level, and they are a team that will go into the next year with a bit of chemistry. Maybe that will help. And a new, new regime. So, so I just don't look at it as a bust. I, I, dis I disagree, and I want to ask you some questions because when I look at this Lakers team, right, you are right, AD is still playing at a high level, LeBron is still obviously playing at a high level, right? Mm -hmm. You get two draft picks, um, that's it. So when we look right. at the West, right, the two, the, the three top teams in the West, this is any, any guess. You would say the Nuggets, you would go the, the Mavs, Magic. you would go Minnesota, Thunder. and let's say the Thunder, that's yeah. four. Mm -hmm. So we just named four teams. So if you, how can it not be a bust when all them teams, majority of them got better, right? They got better and some of them was already good, like the Nuggets. <laughs> Where when we look at the roster for the Lakers, you always say, you can't win with this roster. You can't go super far with this roster. So why you to make no moves, though? LeBron James said, listen, guys, I will not get a max contract. I will save some money for y'all to go out there and get some help because we all know they need help. They need some shooting. They mm -hmm. need some more defense and maybe one more solid role player. Mm -hmm. They didn't get none of that. So LeBron said, okay, y'all don't get nobody. I'm going to get my max deal. That's what he did. Two years for 104. Right. So my thing is, it has to be a bust all season because LeBron James and Lakers is all about championships. The reason why our Lakers fans were so mad about this year's playoff run, not because they, got, they, they, they lost to the Nuggets and only won one game, no. It's because the Celtics, they won a championship, right? Well, it was tied, right? Mm -hmm. Now the Celtics have the lead. I'm talking about the Banners. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has to be a bust for the Lakers because they didn't do nothing better to improve this roster. Yes, you had a new rookie coach, right? He's a rookie coach. Even though he has some veteran coaches on his staff, he, he ain't out there, out there shooting no threes or, or blocking yeah. no shots. So make a rookie's job easier, what we got to do? Get better players. This roster's not good enough to win a championship. I don't think the roster's good enough to win a championship, but I don't think it was good enough to win a championship last year. That's and I don't think that Darvin Ham was the reason why they didn't win a championship. That's what I'm saying. For the offseason, win some trades, yeah. some signs, something. I, I think it's a bust, but I think it's a bust because it's a bust for the Lakers because it's a success for LeBron. LeBron's primary objective is no longer winning championships. It's not winning championships because if his primary Ooh. objective was to win a championship, I don't know that J.J. Redick would be the head coach. 
Mm. If his primary objective was to win a championship, I don't know that he would be playing for the Lakers. If his primary objective was to win a championship, I don't know that Bronny James would be on the team. So I don't think LeBron's primary objective is to win a championship. I think the Lakers and LeBron James have two different goals. Wow. LeBron's primary goal was to play with his son. He did everything within his power to play with his son, and he did. And I'm happy for LeBron for doing that because I'm a LeBron James fan. I'm not necessarily a Lakers fan. Now, if you're a Lakers fan, you should have your concerns hmm. because the Lakers and LeBron are serving two completely different masters. They serve in two completely different gods. The Lakers are serving the God of winning. LeBron James is serving the God of playing with Bronny James and having a coach who he knows well and putting him in his own position of power. So for LeBron James, the offseason was a wild success and shout out to LeBron for doing that. But for the Lakers, you didn't get better. You didn't get the coach you did wanted. Your roster didn't prove in the nature that you wanted. And like Shady already said, all the teams that were already better than you have continued to get better than you. So how could the Lakers offseason be a success? I don't think it's been a success. I think it's been a bust. But for LeBron James, his offseason's been one of the most miraculous things we've ever seen in pro sports. How can you say that, though? Before a slick goes, how can you sit here and say what? that? That LeBron James ain't trying to win a championship. Because uh, he's Because he signed his son in the second round of 55th pick? J.J. Redick, more importantly to me. If you're trying to win a championship, Come first on, and foremost, man. when's the last time we saw a rookie head coach like walk into a situation like the Lakers situation and win a championship? Mm. I don't know, Shady. I don't know the last time we saw a rookie head coach. I know we saw Steve Nash and what Steve Nash did with Wait, Brooklyn. Well, so everything else stays the same, and they have they have Scott Brooks as the head coach instead of. I don't like Scott Brooks either as the mm. head coach. Uh, okay, okay so but who, is there, who would is you, there a coach, is there a they coach that? Yeah, like. I would have felt better about making a decision that you know at least has proven track record. Like, like I would have felt better about going all in on Dan Hurley. You you, you suggested an offer that he Don't. could refuse. So Dan Hurley yeah. might not be able to coach in the NBA. He might not, Don't. but at least you Bible have better. At least you have a better opportunity at knowing whether or not he could, because he has a resume. No, no, no. he definitely has. A, he definitely has a resume. a resume, and JJ doesn't. Correct. But he has a resume in a different sport. He does. JJ has a resume in no sport. Correct. I agree. I agree. Like like. Dan Hurley is more qualified, Correct. Uh, 100%. I agree, but there's no knowing that Dan Hurley would be successful as an NBA coach sure. just because of that, that. That is true. I'm not, and this is not really like, I'm not positioning Dan Hurley or J.J. Redick, but my question is, is there a person, other than Eric Spolstra, who again is unavailable, right. that could take this roster to the finals or win a championship? I don't know that there is, but what I do know is this, and this quote, it haunts me because I was, it was my linebacker coach, my rookie year in the National Football League, Rick Minner, and he said, E, if you make too many exceptions, you'll never be exceptional. Mm. And Joy, you brought up a phenomenal word. You said, I do know that Dan Hurley is more qualified. How many times this offseason have the Lakers passed up on more qualified individuals? Bronny James was not more qualified mm. than other picks. J.J. Redick was not more qualified than other coaches. So if you continue to make decisions to pass up on those that are more qualified for whatever reason, then you're not going to qualify for an NBA title if you keep making those decisions. So I agree. I don't know if there's a coach outside of a Pop or outside of a Spolster or outside of a Steve Missoula, Kerr. outside of a Kerr. You know, I don't know if there is one that could do it. But I just don't, I can't even act like the Lakers are trying to do it because they keep passing up on mm. more qualified individuals for one reason or another. So. I like all of that. But here's the reason that I would say it's not a bust. It's because I can't point to any one move they could have made that would have definitively changed where they are. We can talk about all the players that they were interested in or all the coaches that they were interested in, but I can't look at any of them and say, you know what, if they got that guy, if they got this thing, if they made this move, they would now be championship contenders. And we've, come, we've become so unrealistic when it comes to the Lakers and what the front office is supposed to do. They have reworked this roster at least three times significantly over the last five years. And as a result, they won a championship in the bubble and they went to the Western Conference Finals. And four out of the last five years, they have been in the playoffs. So this idea that somehow that they are underachieving in some massive way, and if they're not competing for a championship every year, then something is wrong. And I'll go to this. This is the heart of it, because we don't want it. We keep thinking, OK, they got AD and LeBron, and so why can't they get the rest of it together to win a championship? Well, let's, let's just run down just in the Western Conference, just the Western Conference. Let's run down the top duos of the top teams in the Western Conference. Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Mm. Are you taking LeBron and AD over those two? I'm not. Are you taking them over Luka Doncic and Kyrie at this point? I might. 
Are you taking them over Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns? Absolutely. At this point? Yeah. I don't, I, Anthony, okay. Carl That's Towns one. All right, Shea Gilgis Alexander and Chet Holmgren. Yeah. Uh, not me. Kevin Durant and, and, and Devin Booker. Yeah. 